Just, not, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Chief. Not, not 150 years ago, but I think it's well, 10 or, year, or, or 12 years ago in uh, City of Fulton, which you cite in your brief, it, it sort of follows up on Justice Thomas's question, although you don't even get to speech. I think the court in that case said, uh, when you're looking at some of the concerns that you're talking about, that a uh, individualized, uh, subjective, multi-factor whatever determination, in that case foster care uh, and, and adoption, is not the same as a seat on the bus or a room in the hotel. Uh, how, how does your argument fit with that uh, position that was articulated in the court uh, with respect to the nature of individual speakers' message? Well, I think those questions are not presented in this case because most artists are not public accommodations, but my friend stipulated that the company was a public accommodation, and often a lot of the hypotheticals that we've been talking about, about artists and, and certainly Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is writing the play Hamilton I, in is terms not of In terms of the uh, concern expressed in a lot of our cases uh, about uh, uh, compelled speech and the distinction of others where you can have a requirement of uh, uh, serving people without regard to uh, certain characteristics. Uh, the case did make the point that to the extent there's um, uh, subjective, uh, individualized determinations that go into the decision about placing uh, children, uh, that it did not, that those cases were not, at least not directly applicable. That's correct, uh, Chief Justice Roberts, and I think here, um, again, the record is entirely devoid of those factors because the company chose to litigate this case as a public accommodation. I think a lot of the description that we heard today would be powerful arguments that they may not be a public accommodation uh, in what they do, but we simply don't have those facts here. But certainly the level of selectivity, uh, uh, the, the, the way in which the, the potential customer engages with the, the client, I'm sorry, with the service provider, and how the service provider makes their uh, product available or, or known to the public, all factor in that analysis. And yeah, I'd like to ask you a question about one other case. It's the one you rely on most heavily in your brief, Rumsfeld against mm -hmm. FAIR. And it seems to me that a distinction you have to deal with in that case is that the speech there uh, was not compelled, or what was compelled uh, when, was not considered speech. Uh, uh, it, it involved the schools providing uh, rooms for the military recruiter. And when it came to the question of compelled speech, what the court said is empty rooms don't speak. Um, uh, but here, of course, the whole argument is that the speech is being compelled. So, so how does the either holding or analysis in FAIR help you? Two uh, responses, Chief Justice. First is, in FAIR, recognize that there was some speech by the schools. There were emails, uh, um, posters on bulletin boards, et cetera. So there was some speech, but it said it was incidental, like in O'Brien, to the purpose of the regulation, which was ensuring equal access, similar to Colorado's law here. Um, and, and the second point, uh, I would make, and it comes from the, the example of the identical website being turned away for the same-sex couple but provided to the opposite-sex couple. Here, sometimes the speech itself does not change. And what this company seeks, if you look at uh, the, the uh, specific prayer for relief in the complaint, is a total permission to turn away every same-sex couple, even if they seek exactly the same website that an, an opposite-sex couple that they well, just provide. Well, just to stop you, their uh, point is they do not turn away same-sex couples who want the service that they're providing. They just won't provide that service with respect to a particular type of wedding. I respectfully disagree, Your, Your Honor. What the company said is under no circumstances will they uh, provide a wedding website for a same-sex wedding, period. Correct. Right. But and that, and that is status-based discrimination. When, and it doesn't matter whose credit card is used for that transaction. What, what the, the sole basis that the company seeks relief from this court is they would like an injunction that says so long as if, if this is going to be used for a same-sex wedding, then we need not provide it. And, and so it's a status-based discrimination that they seek from this court. Let me